Hello, I'm Elisa Peirano, and I will be in charge of the next sessions. And now uh, we'll starting with the next session. Hello, Blanca. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? How are you? Um, I'm ready to start. Oh, yes, let me share my screen. My, can I share my screen? Can you see it there? Yes. So, I guess I can start. Good afternoon. Let me introduce myself. I'm Blanca Sandoval, and, was, uh, and I'm the communications manager of uh, LACNET. It's a pleasure to be with you. I want to thank LACNEG uh, for this, uh, and I want to uh, invite you to see the following video. There's no audio. Bianca, we can't hear the audio. When you share the audio, you also have to share audio. Or do you share the video? Yes, right. You have a checkbox at the bottom left corner. Yes, if you bear with me. Can you tell me where? Because I don't see when you have share at the bottom to your left, there's a checkbox asking you whether you want to share audio to. I found it. It won't uh, let me do it. Okay. So, I'm going to share it later through a QR. So let's uh, just show the video. Can you can you see me? Yes, yes. So, I would have loved it if you can see the video so that you could know more about LACNIC and LACNET. Uh, LACNIC is an initiative that was led by the Innovation Group of IDB, 
And we have developed LACNET in collaboration with IADB, with LACNIC and Red Clara. Now, on the screen, you have a QR where you will have access to more information about us, and you may also access through to documents published in collaboration with IADB. That will give you access to some use cases, uh, case of use of digital identity that are uh, deployed in our networks, and there's a lot more information that I'm sure that will be very interesting. I will share this QR later on. I haven't had a chance uh, to scan it yet, so that, uh, but uh, make sure you have your phones ready. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm sure that many of you have heard about uh, uh, the um, the web th web three. It's it's a reality already. For 2030, it is estimated that about 16.1 trillion assets will be as tokens. Everything, our, our property that identifies us as people, that makes us different from each other, may be tokenized. What do I mean by that? For instance, I live in Mexico. If I need to take some steps at uh, some government agency, very certainly when I go to their offices, they'll request me to show my ID, to show that uh, I'm the person who's trying to do that uh, um, procedure. Or if I'm uh, working, if I, I'm driving and the police, uh, law enforcement stops me, they will request me for my license to check that I am who I claim to be, and maybe the uh, uh, property card of the uh, vehicle. A more simple example, if we want to go to the gym, very often we are asked for a credential that uh, states that we are um, uh, members. Or if I go to a job interview, they might ask me for my professional ID. In Mexico, it's what validates me to uh, practice as, uh, uh, as a professional. Now, everybody or almost everybody uh, keeps uh, the documents in, in a wallet or in a bag. Now, using the blockchain technology to implement a, a self-managed digital identity, these documents can be stored in the so-called digital wallet. These digital wallets are uh, reliable. They can uh, be. Uh, they are portable. They are uh, uh, secure, safe, interoperable, and uh, they preserve uh, privacy. I said blockchain technology. Many people, when uh, they when I speak of blockchain technology, they think of cryptocurrency. But blockchain technology, as a matter of fact, goes well beyond that. The blockchain technology has proven to have a great potential impact for inclusion, to make the vulnerable po uh, populations, those that are marginalized from the formal uh, services, make use of financial and non-financial -finan services Be that can uh, lead the process for so that citizens may get services and improves the privacy. Uh, it preserves the data shared. and. Uh, the confidentiality. This new way we can interact uh, electronically in the Web3 allow people to identify, authenticate uh, uh, electronically, and uh, you don't. They can exchange uh, tokenized uh, value uh, assets um, using the so-called smart contracts. All this is done through. Um, credentials that can be verified, built on the digital identity and blockchain that may be checked uh, as uh, a digital documentation. As we said early by title, I mean an ID card by your boss or a certificate stating that you um, graduated from a university that is um, everything that we mentioned in the earlier um, records.
precisely speaking of educational certificates today the today um, graduations move um, a lot of money but they have a lot of problems with fake degrees and the, all this can be checked in a blockchain network because the credentials can be checked immediately without sharing personal data and especially ensuring decentralized information that cannot be manipulated. Now it won't allow me to move any further. I have a lot of problems with my presentation. I'm so sorry. Can you see the presentation there? Yes, we see the advantages of the digital identity. Yes. I hope you can see it. I think that we can talk a bit about the advantages of this, this digital identity. I think that you'll agree with me that in the world, every day we become more and more global and more and more digitalized. That is why it's so important to have identity ma digital identity management systems that are robust, useful, and that can be scaled up to allow for authentication so that we can know who we are uh, talking to and we may control our data and we can decide at all times so with whom we share it. The digital identity allows the people to avoid the problems of a physical world and to facilitate reliable um, and, uh, and to allow for transactions and uh, digital services. So a um, digital identified is uh, verified and uh, authenticated, authenticated with a great degree of uh, trust and with individual consent. So this protects the user's identity while guaranteeing control of the personal data. In terms of inclusion here, let me share something that I think is an issue. 45% of women above 15 years of age don't have identification in limited income countries compared to 30% with respect to the men. In the case of blockchain, 700 million people could obtain access to financial services, for example. In addition to that, this could potentially reduce 90% the cost of adding customers and digital inclusion could then generate an economic value of about 3, 13% of the GDP by 2030. Everyone can be benefited from this, the public sector, the private sector, and the people. The public sector benefits includes a better service delivery, reducing cost and processes in paper and in storage, to have already prepared data for the purpose of analysis, and something that is very important, enhancing security and transparency among many other benefits. For the private sector, I think this could also be interesting for many of those who are connected. This increases the number of commercial opportunities as identity providers. You manage to have better accessibility to customers. You facilitate user verification processes, and you also reduce service delivery costs. For individuals, what is better than controlling our own information and data, and that these are available to be shared whenever we wish and with whom we wish. A while ago, I was giving you the example of the driving license. I don't know how this works in your different countries. Here in Mexico, at least in Mexico City, from what I am aware of, and I dare to say these were the lucky people, they had the opportunity of obtaining the permanent driving license so for lifetime. And we are well aware that these driving licenses have a limited validity period. So imagine if you ever lose your driving license, 
I don't know if this ever happened to you, but losing your driving license and having to once again go back to the agency to queue up for a long time, pay once again and repeat the entire process and so on. And it's not only that, maybe someone can find our lost driving license and misuse it or the information it contains. So if you have a digital driving license, this would not occur because this would be in the blockchain in a secure and immutable way. So everything sounds very nice and neat, but how do I begin? How do I start to deploy this in the blockchain network? So first of all, let me tell you that you're not on your own. As you were able to see, or as we saw, Blanca, I'm sorry, we still have the same slide on the screen. These are the advantages of the digital identity. Can you see the screen now? But it's not in presentation mode yet. Okay, what a day with this presentation. So how do I start choosing a blockchain network? There are several considerations that you have to bear in mind when selecting a network. These includes the backup that is provided by the one who provides this infrastructure. So the best backup is that of the Inter-American Development Bank and LACNIC. So neutrality, trust, alignment with the national regulations and the international regulations, decentralization, protocol and infrastructure security, and this is an experience in the industry and will also be part of the constructive ecosystem. Let me now tell you about some use cases of blockchain that have already been deployed in our network. Let us start with Block Search Caribbean. Caribbean. As you are aware, the Caribbean region is a very interconnected region, and it was necessary to generate a labor force that has the capacity of moving to, from one country to another and eliminating the larger number of barriers possible. That is why the Inter-American Development Bank is working with the CXC in the Caribbean, who is responsible for issuing diplomas in 16 Caribbean countries in order to issue, manage, and verify digitally these digital certificates or diplomas. This allows international mobility and facilitates the participation in labor force and providing more opportunities for growth to the Caribbean inhabitants of the Caribbean region. Another example that is similar is Certi Joven and Certi Adulto, Young and Adult Certificate. This was produced in Peru. <laughs> Can you hear me? Thank you. So this facilitates joining the labor market. So this is where you register personal information on personal police background and the education and also on the former labor experience of these individuals. All this is in verifiable 
credentials. Now, this provides certainty to the person who is hiring a person in the sense that the submitted information by the candidates is secure and transparent. In addition to that, this reduces the red tape with government organizations. So people own their own documents, they own their information. And once again, this can be submitted in the way they wish and to whomever they wish. Once again, I don't know how this works in your respective countries. I graduated from the UNAM University in Mexico. Sometimes it is difficult to have access to my education record and obtain a study certificate or a copy of my degree, my diploma, or when I leave a job and find another job, I need to find my contract or services page if I worked for the government or some other type of document that is evidence that I worked at a given government agency and for how long if I wish to show this to a potential employer. So all these issues that involve lack chain seek to tear down all those barriers. Now, this is not for the labor and the educational field. Digital identity goes far beyond this, even on many issues, for example, traceability, agricultural products that support smallholders and farmers, supply chain, health, and so on. Here I have another example that has to do with health. There are many examples. So as a result of the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, a new era arose in terms of cert vaccination certificates. The Latin American region need to have, needed to have an interoperable and reliable source. In recent years, if you travel to another country, for example, to the United States, you have to have a vaccination certificates containing certain items, for example. In the first stage of this process, which we call lac pass we developed vaccination certificates that were interoperable and allowed to share this information in all the regions so that inhabitants could have a valid portable vaccination certificate that could be verified cryptographically by whom whatever would require it. This strengthens not only the capacities of the Latin American and Caribbean countries to face the COVID-19 related issues, but this also makes digital transformation in health possible. And because you couldn't watch the video and because we had some issues with the presentation, I would like you to urge you to scan these QR codes that you have on the screen. The first has to do with publications on digital identity done by the Inter-American Development Bank. These are totally open to the public and can help you solve technical issues, application issues, process-related issues, and everything that has to do with digital identity. All these publications are really great for that aim. In addition to that, if you're interested in starting to explore a blockchain network for your projects, don't hesitate and arrange an interview with an expert with the second QR code, and they will help you out with all your questions. I will leave this on the screen so that you can take a picture. And that would be it. I would like to invite you to follow us in the social media at LACnet Networks. And our main goal is to bring Web3 web closer to you. There have been already been deployed uses facilitating the lives of millions of people. We want to make this reachable through our social media and all the work we have been doing also together with LACNIC and also to listen to you, to have your feedback and support you to scale up your projects. So thank you very much and I apologize for the inconveniences with the transmission. I hope the message could be conveyed and also thank you very much to LACNIC for this opportunity. Thank you Blanca for your presentation. Thank you.
We now leave a couple of minutes for questions. If you wish to ask questions, you can queue up at the microphone, state your name and organization, and remote participants can enter your, you can enter your questions in the Q&A panel. I see there's no one in the room. Carlos, no remote participants asking questions? Okay, thank you very much, Blanca. A big round of applause to everyone.